two disciples were on a seven-mile journey from Jerusalem to a village called Emmaus, and their pace was slow and heavy, their packs on their back just a bit heavier than the bags underneath their eyes. They walked hunched over, shoulders down, jaws clenched, eyes to the ground. Two disciples who had bet their lives on the wrong Savior. They were disciples of Jesus of Nazareth, foot soldiers in a revolution, a social movement that sought to make the last first and the first last, to bring the mighty and powerful off their thrones and lift up those who were low. But then something devastating and piercing happened. They took their leader, Jesus, stripped him naked in front of everyone. They spit on his face and mocked him. They hung him up on a cross like an ordinary criminal. They hung him up to die. And these disciples saw it. They saw him take his last breath. They saw him taken down from the cross and laid in a stone tomb. They saw the stone roll to close the tomb. They saw the light fade. And that morning they woke to cries and confusion from those who had visited the tomb. The stone was rolled away, his broken body missing. Rumors of resurrection, but that was too much to bear, too much to endure. So they left Jerusalem. They left Jerusalem and they left their friends, said farewell to the movement. Death had won. The powerful succeeded. The movement crushed. Hope lost. Two disciples were headed home headed back to fishing nets and tax offices, headed back to wheat fields and labor and daily routines, headed back with Jerusalem behind them, and the only hope, the only hope, was that they could forget everything that happened. A stranger joins them on the road and interrupts their conversation. The disciples were mourning. They were rehearsing all that had been done in the past few days, the mistakes that had been made, asking themselves if things could have gone or should have gone differently. And this stranger appeared, and he was ignorant of recent events. So they tell the stranger of Jesus Christ, their Messiah, their friend, mighty in word and deed, until it all went wrong. And in that moment, right then, we receive the most heartbreaking and poignant four words in the entirety of Christian scripture. But we had hoped. Four simple words, but when knitted together, create a heavy sigh in our hearts. But we had hoped, hoped for a future that is not to be, hoped for a dream that caught fire but did not come to pass, a promise that created faith and proved to be false, hoped for a future that is now closed off, now dead and buried in a tomb. But we had hoped. They said it with their bodies on their slow walk down the road, but we had hoped. They said it with their journeying home, away from Jerusalem, returning to their lives before Jesus, but we had hoped. The other disciples embodied this hopelessness, still locked in a room, fearing for their lives, but we had hoped. The disciples were lost in their own despair. We know that even with the comforting words and promises Jesus gave them, he died. He was gone. 
And in that moment, for those disciples, nothing else made sense. Nothing else mattered. Hope is a dangerous thing. Hope requires us to place our trust in persons, in events, in mysteries out of our control. Hope causes us to be vulnerable to disappointment, to fill our hearts with promises untested. For many, there are hopes fulfilled, promises satisfied, prayers answered. But you and I also know that raw and stinging feeling of those disciples on the road, of hope lost. But we had hoped the cancer would heal. But we had hoped the marriage would work. But we had hoped the money would last. But we had hoped that we had a chance to say goodbye. But we had hoped that by now we would be together. But we had hoped that this year would be the year of police reform. But we had hoped that this year gun violence would decline. But we had hoped, we had hoped, we had hoped. When our hope is lost or when our lives feel completely upended, we are left wondering, like the disciples, where was God in the midst of it all? Where was God when our secure and predictable future suddenly became insecure and unpredictable? Where was God when we felt pain by no fault of our own? Where was God when the path forward seemed to crumble and we were left to wonder how the pieces could be placed back together. But we had hoped. Theologian and United Church of Christ in Japan, Pastor Kazo Kitamori, asks some of those same questions. Writing in the wake of World War II and nuclear destruction, when the world in Japan around him and his flock was so utterly upended, Kitamori wondered where God was in our mortal hopelessness. In his work, The Pain of God, Kitamori suggests that God is not in the cause of our hopelessness, not in the source of our anguish or disappointment, but God is in our pain, taking it on, experiencing it at the same time as us, God feels our pain, discouragement, disillusion, and sorrow. For Kitamori, God experiencing our pain with us is the work of salvation. He looked at the whole Bible and saw within it a story of human pain and disappointment and of a God who resolves to experience that pain with us a God who took on human flesh and all the trappings of this mortal life, suffering, disappointment, anguish. God experiences it with us, takes it on, meets us in those low points, so to remind us that we are not alone. According to Kitamori, that's the heart of the story of salvation and the hope of the gospel. He writes, Salvation is the message that our God enfolds our broken reality, a God who embraces us completely. This is God our Savior. Is there a more astonishing miracle in the world than that God embraces our broken reality? Our reality is hopelessly broken, yet the gospel brings us the message of hope even for the hopeless. For the disciples, their grief and pain hid the reality from their eyes. Jesus had been walking with them. All that time, Jesus had been right beside them. All that time, Jesus had been intently listening. All that time, God had been at work. 
All along the road, God had been bearing their sorrows and meeting them in their grief, their fear, their disappointment, and their broken hope. When they reached the end of the road, when their eyes were fully opened, they saw that God was on the road of struggle and pain with them. They looked back with illumination and enlightenment and saw that God had always been with them. Once they came to that realization, the disciples found freedom from their despair, burning hearts and renewed hope, not in dreams dashed, but in the God who never left them. That's the promise of our resurrection faith and of the God Kitamori gave testimony to, a God who is not the cause of our disappointment and pain, not the root of disorder and destruction, but one who journeys with us through it all, the one who knows our trouble and heartache, takes it on, and assures us that we are not alone. And in that God is a hope worth having. Amen.